if you don't mind, if you if you can, if you could just share the video, hopefully uh, not only uh, will this bless you, but hopefully it'll bless others as well in the same manner in which that it has blessed me and corrected me and, and, and has pointed me in the, in the right direction. So, but uh, if you read it in the heading right there, the, the title of the video, we are in the book of John chapter 12. John chapter 12, beginning in verse 42. And uh, I hope that uh, this brings some correction to us because I, uh, I know I've made this mistake. I'm sure others have made this mistake. And uh, so I pray that this brings some correction to it. But let's go ahead and get into it. We are in the book of John chapter 12, beginning in verse 42, and it says, many people did believe in him, in Jesus. However, including, um, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit, um, oh, sorry, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. Okay. It's like the, the church. Um, I'm not reading the comments anymore, just so you know. Um, verse 43, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. Jesus shouted to the crowds, if you trust me, you are trusting not only me, but also God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me. For I have come to save the world and not judge it. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. Okay? Now let's go ahead and dive into this. And, and, and you know what I mean? We're going to dissect it. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the Bible, um, you know about the Pharisees, the Sadducees, you know what I mean? All of the, 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 like the religious leaders. That, you know what I mean, had a whole bunch of head knowledge, but had no, no transformation of the heart, okay? They knew a lot of scripture, but they didn't apply it. They knew the scripture, but instead of using it to, you know what I mean, instead of allowing it to change their heart, they just used it to point the finger at people and call people out, all right? Now... Many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders. All right. So when Jesus came along, a lot of people believed in him, even the Jewish leaders. But they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees, okay, would expel them from the synagogue. For they loved human praise more than the praise of God. I don't know if you've ever been in the position when you know that something is being done, you know, at a church, church building, something's being done and it's, and, and, and it's not correct. But for fear of going against the current, you kept your mouth closed. Okay. I know I've been in place in those positions where I've seen something and there was times where I didn't speak up and there was times where I did speak up. Now, what are the reasons as to why you stay quiet? What are the reasons as to why you don't speak up? What are the reasons as to why you don't obey the conviction of the Holy Spirit? What are the reasons as to why you don't do what the word of God says? You know what I mean? Why? 
Unfortunately for these folks right here, the reason as to why they believed in Jesus, but they didn't admit it and they didn't allow, you know what I mean? They didn't allow that, 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 that transformation of the heart to take place was because of the fact that they didn't want to get expelled from the synagogue. I don't know how your church is, where you go at, but is it a place where they teach the Bible or is it a, a place where you go and you hang out? Is it a social club? Is it a place where you just go and hang out? Or is it a place where you go and, and, and you guys get real? Is it a place where you go and, and they make you uncomfortable and they push you out of your comfort zone and cause you to grow? Is it biblical? Or is it a place where you just go and hang out? They just make you feel good. And you don't want to go against the current because you're afraid that they're going to kick you out of the social club. I don't know if you've noticed it. A lot of times when you go to churches, a lot of times they have little cliques and you want to be part of the clique. You know what I mean? It's understandable. We all want to, you know what I mean? We all want to fit in. I understand it. You know, we all want to belong. I, I, you know what I mean? I, 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 I don't, you know what I mean? I have my issues where I don't want to be an outcast. But when it comes to obeying God or obeying people, we're going to have to make a choice. Do we want the praise of man or do we want the praise of God? Do we want to be right with man or do we want to be right with God? When we gather at church, when we go and gather and when we assemble as a church, it shouldn't be just so we can, you know what I mean, belong to a group of people. It's not a social club. That is the reason why a lot of people come to church and end up getting hurt because they, they you know what I mean, they can't be part of your little clique. They don't dress the way you do. They don't drive the car that you do. They don't live in the neighborhood that you do. And all of a sudden, they don't, they don't belong in your little cliques. And we rather look good. We rather have the praises of men instead of having the praise of God. Who are we trying to impress? Are we trying to impress other people? Or are we trying to impress our Heavenly Father? Do we want to hear, wow, you're awesome from people? Or do we want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant on that day when we get up there? Whose praises are you looking for? Now I understand, you know what I mean? Let's get along. I get it. You know what I mean? But when it comes down to it, what praises are we looking for? Are we looking for the praise of man? We just want to fit in. There's a difference, okay? And I, and I need you to understand that. We, we, we all have our wounds. We all have our insecurities. We all have these things that make us feel, you know what I mean, less than. So are we coming to church and are we just trying to fit in? We want to be accepted because we're insecure about ourselves. Or are we coming to church so we can come to the feet of Jesus so that we can be healed? Do we want the praises of men that just make us feel good inside? Or do we want the praises of, do we want the praise of God that says, well done? You came to me and you got real with me. And because of your faith, your faith has made you well. I would rather hear your faith has made you well. You made a fool out of yourself for other people, but your faith has made you well. Instead of just coming to a church and just, you know what I mean, just being that, you know, oh, I, I, I don't want, you know what I mean, I don't want to look crazy. I just want to fit in. Heck no. Many people did believe in him, however, including some of the Jewish leaders, but they wouldn't admit it for fear that the Pharisees would expel them from the synagogue. I'd rather go against the whole, you know what I mean, the whole gathering, the whole assembly. I would rather go against all of them. And be right with God than to go against God and have the approval of everyone. Why? Because Jesus is the one who died for me. The, the word of God says, do not fear man that can only kill the body. But it, man, be concerned, okay? Be concerned about, about going against God. Who can kill the body and cast your soul into hell. What can mere men do to you? They can hurt the flesh, but they can't touch your soul. 
Who are you trying to impress? Are you just trying to be, you know, you, you, you're trying to impress people? Or are you trying to be right with God? That's something that you got to ask yourself and you got to be honest with yourself for yourself and for your wife and for your kids. You, that, that, you know what I mean? For those right there that you're impacting around you. Because we can put on a show and we can look good for people, but at the end, what are you doing? Is that, is, is, is that the right is that the right thing to do? Is that, is that the right direction? Jesus shouted to the crowds, if you trust me, you are trusting not only in me, but also the God who sent me. Jesus is saying, I understand. I'm going to make you walk through some things that are not comfortable. I understand. It's not what you've been taught. The tradition of man, I know it's comfortable. The tradition of man is satisfying to you and to your flesh. I get it. But Jesus is saying, listen to me. Trust me. If you trust me, you are trusting not only in me, but also in God who sent me. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. Listen, I'm going to be flat out, okay? I'm going to be blunt with it. You got a lot of people in church who are comfortable being lukewarm. You got a lot of people in church who are comfortable just warming up you. You got a lot of people in church who are comfortable just looking the part. You got a lot of people in church who do not trust God. You got a lot of people who go there because that's just what my dad did and that's just what my grandpa did and, and, and that's just what we do on Sunday. We're good old folks and that's just what we do. We come to church. That's what we do on Sunday. We just go to church. But at the end of the day, they don't trust God. And what are we doing? Just trying to fit in with them? We have got to be careful. We're trying to fit in with people that don't even aim to please God. Who have no love in their heart. I'm not sitting here trying to judge anyone, but I'm a, it's the truth. I'm not pointing fingers at anyone. But I'm saying, go ahead and ask yourself that question. And you got to be honest with yourself because you got to give an account for you. If you go to church just because that's just what we do, that's the tradition. But you're not doing it because you say, you know what? I got some sin in my life. I got some junk in my life that I got to get. I, I got to I got to get it taken care of. If you go into church, but you ain't changing, we got an issue. If you claim to follow Jesus, but you're not growing, you're not changing. If you claim to follow him, but you're not even following him, we got an issue. Are you seeking the acceptance of man or are you seeking the acceptance of God? I'm not trying to be jacked up. I'm not trying to be, you know what I mean, judgmental, how a lot of folks will take it. I'm just being honest with you. This is serious. If we claim to believe in God and if we claim to believe in the Bible, then we got to understand that when it's all said and done, we're either going to spend eternity in heaven with our heavenly father or we're going to choose to go to hell. I don't say this to put fear in anybody. I'm just stating the facts. I don't say this to be judgmental or be jacked up. I'm just, I'm just telling you exactly what it is. If we claim to believe in God, then we got to be real. And we got to be honest. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. What is the dark? Ignorance. We choose to remain in the dark. We choose to remain in ignorance. But that's just, that's just what we do. That's what my grandpa did. That's what my mom did and my, my dad. And, and that's what I do too. But is that what the Bible teaches? We got to be careful that we don't willingly. Okay. Because a lot of us willingly, we choose to remain in the dark because we choose to follow the tradition of man. Listen, are you doing what the Bible is telling you to do? Are we doing what Jesus, the example that Jesus gave us, are we following his example or are we following the example of men? 
That is the reason as to why Jesus lived the life that he lived for 33 years, setting the example of what it is to live an earthly life, a life of obedience. He obeyed his parents. And then he, and then he did his ministry, showing us what it's like to be a servant. He could have done it a whole different way, but he did it the way that he did it to set the example for me and you. For when you see me, you are seeing the one who sent me. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. I will not judge those who hear me. Listen, and I want you to understand this, okay? I want you to understand this because I don't want you to take this the wrong way and, 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 and try to make it something that it's not. Understand what he's saying here. I will not judge those who hear me but don't obey me for I have, for I have come to save the world and not to judge it. Do we understand how loving and how, how gracious he is that he says, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to tell you the truth and I'm not going to judge you if you choose to disobey me. I'm still going to love you. I'm still going to show you grace. I'm still going to show you mercy. Do we understand that? That while we're down here, you should be doing the same thing to other people. Okay? Jesus says, I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me. For I have come to save the world and not judge it. Jesus, Jesus is not judging you right now. He's still showing you grace, still showing you mercy. Still forgiving you, still extending forgiveness of everything. He's not judging you. But we got to understand. Okay? Do not make the mistake of, of taking his kindness for weakness. Jesus is not here just, you know what I mean, busting you upside the head. Listen to what he's saying. I will not judge those who hear me, but don't obey me, for I have come to save the world and not judge it. Now, let's bring it full circle. The next verse says, But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. While there's still a chance for you to repent of your sins, Jesus says, I'm not going to judge you. I'm still extending grace. I'm still loving on you. I'm still pouring out my, 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 my forgiveness all over you, and I pray that you accept it. God doesn't want to see any of us perish. So while there's still time for us to repent, Jesus says, I'm still extending my grace. I'm still showing you mercy. I'm still here willing to forgive everything if you are willing to repent. But all who reject me and my message will be judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. When it's all said and done, Jesus says, you're judged by, by, by what it is that you did. You're judged on the day of judgment by the truth I have spoken. I gave you the truth and you rejected it. What are we doing? Are we rejecting the truth that Jesus is giving us just so that we can fit in with man? Are we rejecting the truth that Jesus is giving us just so we can remain comfortable? What are we doing? Because I'm telling you, you got a lot of folks. I'm going to say it again. You got a lot of folks within the church who don't follow Christ. You got a lot of folks within the body. Okay? Who are not true believers. They assemble with us. But they do it because that's tradition. And if you're one of those people that just, you know what I mean? You go to a church building, you, you, you assemble with the church because it's tradition, because it makes you feel good about the sin that's in your life, but you're not making no change. You're not surrendering your heart to Jesus completely. We got an issue. Because unfortunately, we're following some people that we, just because we want their acceptance, and at the end, we're going to follow them straight to hell. I'm not trying to be jacked up. I'm just stating the facts. Are we seeking the approval of man or the approval of God? 
when it's all said and done, do we want a bunch of high fives from people? Or do, when it's all said and done, I would rather, I'm going to tell you flat out, I would rather be a reject. I would rather be that dude that doesn't fit in and just get one approval. And that is by my heavenly father telling me, well done, my good and faithful servant. At the end of the day, what are we doing? Trying to fit in with a bunch of insecure people that are more insecure than us? What are we trying to do? Fit in with people that are more jacked up than we are? I'm just, I'm being honest with you right now. Times are getting tough. I, I'm not no end time freak. I ain't know this and that, but I do know this. Something is coming. If you thought last year was a rough one, something is coming that is really this year and it has nothing to do with politics. OK. Please understand what I'm saying, because a lot of people are going to, you know, oh, listen to me. At the end of the day, we do not wrestle with flesh and blood. This is spiritual. And if we're not spiritually fit, if we're not strong enough spiritually, if we, ha if we are not getting ready, we're going to get picked off and we're going to get picked off nasty. We have got to get real. Man cannot save you. The approval of man cannot save you. Let me, let me share one more thing with you, okay? And this was from the other day. And I pray that this encourages you right here. I believe it was on the 10th. This is in Mark chapter 10, okay? And this is where I'm at right now. My faith is at this point right now. It is in Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 46. Okay? Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 46, and it says, Then they reached Jericho. This is Jesus and his disciples, okay? Then they reached Jericho. And as Jesus and his disciples left town, a large crowd followed him. A blind beggar named Bartimaeus was sitting beside the road. When Bartimaeus heard that Jesus of Nazareth was, was nearby, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Be quiet, many of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, tell him to come here. So they called the blind man. Cheer up, they said. Come on, he's calling you. Bartimaeus drew aside his coat, jumped up and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. My rabbi, the blind, ma the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, go, for your faith has healed you. Instantly, the man could see, and he followed Jesus down the road. Now, I don't know what you may be dealing with. This man right here was tired of being blind. He was tired of it. He had heard of this Jesus that could heal him. He had heard of this Jesus that could heal the blind, heal the lame. He had heard all these amazing things about Jesus. And he heard Jesus is coming. And he started shouting, Jesus, have mercy on me. And the people that were around him told him, whoa, whoa, hey, now be quiet. <laughs> Don't do that, bro. That's weird. What, what, why are you doing that for? That's embarrassing, man. You're embarrassing yourself. Calm down. You, it, it, you don't need to do all that.
What kind of people are you surrounding yourself by? Are you surrounding yourself by people like that guy that was paralyzed who, who took who took their friend up to the roof of a house and started tearing the roof apart saying, you know what? Your problem is our problem. Your burden is our burden. We're tired of seeing you the way that you are. And if you want to change, you know what? We're putting that burden upon our shoulders and we're taking you to Jesus. We're praying for you. We're going to, man, we're going to, we're going to walk with you. They took them to the top of this house and they started taking the roof apart. And they're saying, we're getting you to Jesus. We're going to get you that miracle one way or another. And they took him to Jesus. They got him there. And the man left walking. That's the kind of friends I want. That's the kind of people I want around me. That's the kind of people I want to congregate with. The kind that say, you know what? Your problem is my problem. If you ain't strong enough to pray, then we praying for you. If your faith is, 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 is weakening because you're tired, you know what? My faith is, I'm, I stand in the gap for you. Or are you surrounding yourself by these kind of people that tell you, whoa, 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 hey, be quiet, man. It doesn't take all that to be a Christian. Dude, calm down. That's embarrassing. You ain't got to shout like that. What kind of people are we surrounding ourselves by? By people who truly believe or by people who just go hang out? Now, when I tell you that I believe, I believe. I still got some junk in me that, that I got to, you know what I mean? I got to resolve. I'm like that man that had the son that, 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 you know what I mean? That, that was possessed. And he said, Jesus, I believe, but please help my unbelief. That's where I'm at right now because I, I want to push through that threshold where, where, I mean, I'm talking about, I don't care. I want to be that dude that, yes, he, I'm crazy. Call me what you want. I'm that dude, yes, call me what you feel. When it comes to God, I'm, 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 I'm getting more bolder and bolder. As, as, as the more that I read, the more that I'm getting bolder. I'm getting weirder by the freaking day. Because I know who my God is. And as, as, as crazier as it's getting out here, the more crazier I'm becoming for God. Why? Because I want to do my Father's will. Because I'm sick and tired of sitting around seeing people die. I'm sick and tired of seeing people go to hell because people come to church just to hang out. I'm sick and tired of people coming to church and, and, and they're embarrassed to come to God with their mess because they're afraid of getting judged by people who come to church just to hang out. What are we doing? Are we seeking the praise of men or are we seeking the praise of God? Are we going to church? Are we congregating because it's tradition? Like for real, like, like Jesus said, he's a great physician, that he's a doctor. Do you go to the doctor's office just to hang out? Or do you go because you realize that there's something wrong with you and you're seeking help? Does that make sense to you? Who of you goes to a hospital just to hang out? If you go to a doctor's office, like you go to, a, to the hospital, to the emergency room, just to hang out, like, you know, you're weird. I understand. Fellowship. Yeah, I get that. Let's not try to make it something that is not. We can all hang out after, you know what I mean? After the service, after we worship and after we get real with God, we can, we can hang out. 
We can all go to Chick-fil-A and, and you know what I mean? I get that. But when it's time to get real with God, are we getting real? Or are we just going to hang out? I got some junk that I'm dealing with and I'm sick and tired of dealing with it. I'm like Bar blind Bartimaeus right now. Where are you? You good with it? I'm sick and tired of dealing with some of the things that I'm dealing with. And I'm, I'm, I'm at the side of that road yelling out for Jesus right now. I'm sick and tired. I need a miracle. Where are you? Where do you stand? Are you okay just going through life, just dealing with the junk? When are we going to get real? There is a dying world out there. And what are we doing? Just going to church to hang out. Get out of here, man. There's people out there dying. And what are we doing? We're so afraid of what people think. Instead of doing what our father has asked us, has commanded us to do. Man, dude. What are we doing? I don't like feeling the way that I feel. But I'm telling y'all, man. We got to get real. This little mediocre 45 minutes on Sunday, go hang out like. You kidding me? We're too afraid, too embarrassed to, 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 like. I don't need nobody telling me to shut up. If you ain't dealing with what I'm dealing with, then you don't know. How are we going to tell somebody to shut up if we don't carry the burden that they're carrying? They calling out to Jesus because they need a miracle. And what are we doing? Whoa, whoa, hey, be quiet. We don't need to do all that. And you got people afraid to call out to Jesus because they're afraid of, of, of losing your approval? Man. What kind of friend are we being? The kind that's telling them, like blind Bartimaeus telling him? Or are we like the friends of the paralyzed man that, that took him to the roof of the house and started busting a hole in there? Because they were tired and they were saying, you know what? We're going to get you the miracle that you need. We're going we're gonna to walk through, we're going to walk this out with you. We all have some checking ourselves to do. We all have some inventory that needs to be taken. We, listen to me, we are not in a time to play around. We are not in a time to take things lightly. I encourage you, get real. If you are blind Bartimaeus right now, continue to yell. And if you're that friend that's telling me, like blind Bartimaeus to be quiet, check yourself. If everything's good on your side, praise God. But if you got some friend that needs you to have their back, then yell with him. Call out to Jesus for him. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm burdened, man. This is not the time to play around. I'm telling you. This is not the time. This is not the time to play around. I encourage you. I encourage you. I encourage you. I encourage you. Get in your word. Because this is not the time to play around. I got to get inside. I got to help my wife.
I love you guys. Please continue to press forward. Continue to get in your word. Continue to call out to your father. Do not seek the approval of man. Seek the approval of your heavenly father. When it's all said and done, the one thing that you want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. That right there is worth way more than the approval of any, any, I don't care how many likes, I don't care how many shares, I don't care how many, how many followers, how many, I don't care how, it doesn't matter. Nothing, 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 no approval, it doesn't matter how many people, it will not add up to hearing just that one, well done, my good and faithful servant. Continue to press forward. Love you guys. God bless you.